So good morning and welcome to this morning's online service. And the great thing about online videos is that they're not held by time and space. So this morning I can have the pleasure of being with you here and also with some folk in St Peter's Church, Lowick. So wherever you are on this seventh Sunday after Trinity, we hope that you enjoy worshipping with us this morning. And we can now jet off to the other side of the world to Sydney Cathedral in Australia. And the choir there quickly recorded their version of praise to the Lord Almighty just when the decision to lock down was made a few months ago. So enjoy. The reading is from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, starting at verse 26. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing 
that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 10, verses 17 to 27. It's entitled, The Rich Man. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honour your father and mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Now the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Well then, who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible but not for God. For God, all things are possible. This is the Gospel of Christ. Amen. Good morning. We come to the final T in our Mark Submission series. You have heard Captain Allen expand on Tell, Transform, Reverend Heather on Teach and me on Tend. And now we come to Treasure or Caring for God's World. I'd like to begin with a prayer. Everlasting God we thank you for this glorious creation, the earth with all its richness and beauty, which you have given us to care for and protect. Forgive us 
for those times we've been neglectful, not recognizing the true value of your gift, nor the responsibility we have in ensuring its preservation. Give us strength and grace to act justly, not forgetting those who are suffering the most, but standing alongside them in their quest for justice that the world might find peace and renewal. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Whilst researching, I came across a resource created by the Anglican Board of Mission, which is a national mission agency of the Anglican Church of Australia. I borrowed these slides from one of their presentations. And I almost feel that I don't need to say any more. It's interesting to see how the same goals are differently focused in the Southern Hemisphere. More of that a little later. We've spoken of our specific task or mission that we've been given by Jesus. But are we to understand that looking after the planet is part of that? It was already quite a task. At the very beginning of our Bible is the creation story. God makes his good world and creates man in his image to be its caretaker. You heard the reading from the first chapter of Genesis and it's echoed in the second ch chapter of Genesis. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. A bit more succinct this one. I think that those terms like dominion and subdue could be misleading. God created man in his own image, loving and caring then, part of his creation, but with a special place in it, to be a steward of the wonderful world he'd created, to love and care for it as he does. This is a translation of the same passage. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea and the birds in the air, the cattle and yes the earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of earth. As Christians, then we are tasked with protecting creation, but what does that mean in real terms? Global warming is accelerated as a consequence of human actions. In our part of the world, there have been floods and high winds. Weather, which is unseasonably hot or unseasonably cold, and it makes growing veg a bit of a challenge. Of course, flooding and storm damage has made people's homes unlivable and businesses unable to trade, much more vital than my runner beans and tomatoes, which I don't have to rely on to live. In some areas of the world, climate change is having even more devastating effects. From this Australian Board of Mission again, I came across a number of letters written by people in the Pacific Islands, already poor and living from their land and sea. Their lifestyle may seem idyllic, but it is so fragile. They are appealing to help for help from Australia, a near neighbour. Hello, my name is Rico Mone. I am from Rarumu, Rarumana village in the western province of Solomon Islands. I grew up in the village, attended the local primary and middle school and enjoyed the rural subsistence way of life in gardening, swimming, fishing, diving and collecting shellfish from the mangroves and reefs. It was always plentiful to harvest and plentiful left for another day and plentiful to eat to one's content. This has changed drastically in the last 10 or so years 
and it is now very difficult to find enough shellfish to feed the family. The mangrove swamps have either dried up or too much saltwater intrusion that the shellfish can no longer survive and multiply. With the loss of an income from selling shellfish, it affects their ability to pay for other things, their children's school fees, medical expenses and communication. We are calling on Australian leaders as our nearest neighbours and Wontoks to come to our islands with experts in these areas and see for yourselves the destruction and do something that will help alleviate the problems. Thank you. And another, which shows that for some, the worst has already happened. I am Newton Nakoda, a priest in the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea, who is so much overwhelmed by the effect of climate change and global warming faced by the world, and more particularly by the Pacific Island nations. I was born and raised on the northern coast of Papua New Guinea, then moved to the Highlands 21 years ago, where I am currently teaching in a Bible school. My village on the coast of 50 years ago is no more there. It is now under salt water like so many others along the northern coast. Last year, from April to December, the whole nation of Papua New Guinea went through drought caused by severe El Nino weather system, resulting in food gardens badly devastated. In the highlands where sweet potato is the staple food, people lost all their crops and thus resorting to fruits, wild berries and nuts for survival, losing through death some of their young and oldies in the process. I'm here by writing to seek Australian government's generosity in its own policies and to advocate for climate justice in the Pacific. Does this concern us? What can we do? What should we do? The reading from Mark's Gospel tells of a young man who is confident he's doing everything that has been asked of him. He has followed the rules of his faith and yet when in conversation with Jesus he finds that is not enough. Jesus looked at him and loved him we're told but still he asked more of him, perhaps because he knew that he could give more if he chose, and not just money, although we're told he was rich, but of himself. I sometimes feel as he must have, what else can I do? Jesus knows what we can give, what we can do, but the choice is ours. The same may apply to our response to climate change. I recycle, I walk where I can, I wear my clothes till they fall apart, but that's partly because I don't like shopping. I harvest rainwater for the garden, use green electricity, and yet I know there is so much more I could do. But it is easy to feel helpless in the face of such global problems. But the tide is turning. Little by little and all too slowly, the state of the planet and our care for it, or lack of it, is at least on the agenda. As Christians, we do have a duty and other religions feel this too. The Church of England website has many suggestions as to how we might contribute to this shift, both individually and as a church community. It also has some uplifting sound bites. Here are a couple for you. Faith communities are places where those small groups of thoughtful, committed citizens are found. We're not perfect, we're not uniform, but we are communities of hope 
whose values lead us to work for change to bring about a more sustainable world. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. As we make changes to our buildings, we can consider how we might make them more environmentally friendly and sustainable, both at home and at church. Now, I know that it costs money, but think what it costs if we don't. Even small changes count, low energy light bulbs, not using disposables. Some things are easy. Some take a bit more thought to get beyond the, well, there's nothing we can do about that. There probably is. We can start small and move on from there. But if nothing else, the coronavirus has shown us how inventive and resourceful we can be in the face of challenge. God loves us. God loves the world. We were created to care for the world in relationship with God. Is that too big a job? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Amen. Thank you, Jackie, for those uh, words of challenge and encouragement too. And let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the good things in our life. Thank you for all the good gifts you send us. And help us now, we pray, to take seriously the environment around us and to take care of your creation. Pray you would help us to ponder on what we can do and then help us to do it and play our little part in that bigger picture. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we recognise that the results of changes in the climate and environment are only just beginning to hit us. But we now pray for those who are already facing the effects of it. After Jackie's uh, thoughts today, we pray especially for those who live in the Solomon Islands, in Papua New Guinea, and those on other islands in the Pacific. We pray, Lord, that we would have a sense of urgency on their behalf. You would help us, Lord, to do what we can, when we can, and play our little part in the bigger picture as caretakers and stewards of your creation. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we thank you that we too are part of your created order. And so we pray for those who need your healing at the moment. Pray for those who mourn. Pray for those who are ill. Pray for those who face death and for those who are despondent. And we lift them all to you this day as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen well having been thinking and praying about our a role in creation alongside God in keeping and preserving it for ourselves but also for the many generations that will follow us all there really is only a one hymn we can sing isn't there and that's how great thou art O Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand has made how great thou art When I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee.
Well, my soul was certainly singing through that hymn. What a fantastic hymn. How great our God is. So just to let you know that next week there will, of course, be an online service, but also there'll be a face-to-face -face service in St. Peter's Church, Stanyon, and that will be at 10 o'clock. If you'd like to come to that, then you need to contact me before 9 p.m. on Thursday and request a uh, a seat reservation and we will then get back to you by Friday to let you know whether that's possible or not. Please book either on the website, by email or by telephone. And so we come to the end of our service this morning and we're going to pray the collect prayer So let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow, though our faith is small as mustard seed. Make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so a final blessing. So may our God, the creator of all things, who invites us to nurture and preserve that creation, watch over each one of us and those we love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain upon you. Amen. <laughs>